Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Good evening po sa inyong lahat and welcome to the second session of our civil service exam review. And of course, this is brought to you by Gurong Pinoy. Tonight's session is on verbal reasoning. I am Coach Sha, and I will be with you for a couple of hours to help you answer test items on English grammar and correct usage. If you are a lab taker, you may also join us here since the general information part of the lab will also cover verbal reasoning. By the way, we have given you in advance a copy of the test material of the verbal reasoning part one. I hope you were able to scan through the items or even started answering the test so that we will be able to have a smoother flow of discussion tonight. The test materials and the full video of the review sessions, however, are exclusively a shared to Gurong Pinoy group members. So join the po tayo sa Gurong Pinoy. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to send us a message in our Gurong Pinoy Facebook page. All right. Um, may I also invite you to input in the comments section your location so we would be able to know kung gaano po kalawak yung sakop ng review natin for tonight. All right. And uh, should you know anybody or a friend who is also about to take the test and is not right here, please do tag them here or share them this video so we would be able to help as many people in preparing for the said test. Okay. And um, I believe that your attendance for tonight in this session is part of your preparation. And this is confirmed by Alexander Graham Bell when he said that. Before anything else, preparation is the key to success. And I believe that with the right preparation, each one of us right here will be able to succeed in the test. It just takes the right spirit, the motivation, and of course, a strong heart to believe in ourselves that we can make it. But don't you worry, your Gurong Pinoy family will always be here to back you up. And of course, to prepare you to succeed in the test. All right, so good luck, everyone. Let's begin our session with the prayer. God of victory, we know we can achieve glorious things through you. We know you will lead us into wonderful achievements in this review. We know that you are with us during this time of studying and preparing. Please help us reach our goals and the standards that we have set for ourselves. Lead us towards excelling. On the day of the exam, please make known to each one of us, Lord, whatever we have learned. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So let me check first. Let me check first and uh, do some shout out to those who are here with us tonight. Oh, we have a Facebook user from Quezon City. We also have uh, from Antique and from Bulacan. Oh, Uzamis. So we have uh, Visayas, uh, Mindanao, and Luzon audience. Wow, ang lapad ng sakop natin. I hope this session will be uh, very productive and meaningful for all of you. All right, so let's start. Uh, as I have said, our session for tonight is on verbal reasoning, and I have chosen uh, items for English grammar and correct usage. In the upcoming sessions, I will be uh, sharing with you items on Filipino, because if you take the civil service exam, it's not only exclusive to English, but you will also encounter test items for Filipino. But for tonight, um, I have prepared test items exclusively for English and um, hopefully uh, the mas malawak yung sakop ng, ng items in relation to the grammar rules. Okay? So, um, the instruction says, or the directions says, 
choose the the word or phrase that would best complete each sentence. And I hope you are now ready. So in the comments section, as you see the test questions, please key in one, two, three, or four, or five, which will be the choices that you will encounter when you take the civil service exam. Okay? Let's begin with the first question. Everybody, get ready. I hope you don't mind blank joining you. Is it my, me, if I, so I will, or that I made? Please key in your answers. And um, if you key in your answer and uh, you remember a grammar rule that support your answer, you may also share it here in the comment section. I'm receiving varied answers so far. Some also put answers with a question mark, meaning you're still not so sure about it. I will help you. I will later on guide you to arrive at the correct answer. Okay. All right. So the choices, the answers that were keyed in here ranges from one, two, or three. So nobody answered four and five, and that's good because four and five are actually not the correct answers. So let's take a look first at answers, choices three, four, and five. So these answers are actually incorrect. Let me... Why would they say so? If we read the statement, if we fit the choices in the statement, it would be, I hope you don't mind if I joining you. Now, joining is not a verb. Although it looks like a verb, given the word join, when you add an ing, it could become a verbal already. A verbal. Allow me to just give you a, a brief uh, discussion on a verbal. A verbal is a word that looks like a verb but actually does not function as a verb or an action in the sentence. So joining here, although it looks like a verb, does not act as a verb actually. So how do we correct that? So we would say, I hope you don't mind if I join you. So the subject becomes I and the verb becomes join, all right? So true with items four and five, given that the word joining is a noun or a, yeah, is a, a function, is a verbal that functions as a noun. We call it a gerund. Um, if we correct the statements in number four, we remove the ing in the word join. The same thing in choice number five. But even if we correct it, even if the word becomes join, number four and number five are still not correct sentences because the meaning are different. It's not the intended meaning. For example, when you say, I hope you don't mind, so I will join you. The so expresses a result and the statement does not intend to express so. The same with number five. So three, four, and five are actually incorrect. Let's take a look at items. Uh, we're now left with uh, choices one and two. It's between my and me. When we say my, it's, it's a possessive case pronoun and me is an objective case pronoun. So let's take a look. I hope you don't mind my joining you. I hope you don't mind me joining you. So let's see what the, what the rule says about these two. So when we say we use, a, the rule says that we use a possessive pronoun before a gerund when you want to indicate the doer of the action. So let's take a look at this. I appreciate you helping me. And the word helping, as I have told you earlier, is a, is a gerund, a kind of verbal that acts as a noun. 
<laughs> Don't worry if in the first item you already got it wrong. Um, but if we take a look at this statement, the first one, it's incorrect because uh, the you is an objective pronoun. When we say objective pronoun, meaning it becomes a receiver, not the doer. When you want to express that it's the doer of the action, you use the possess possessive pronoun. So you would say, do, how do we correct the first statement? You would say, I appreciate you. Whom do I appreciate? It's you. So you becomes the receiver of the action. And why? Because you helped me. So the way, one way to correct the uh, erroneous sentence is this way. But uh, to pair it with a gerund, instead of saying you, we use the word your. I appreciate your helping me. Who's helping do I appreciate? It's not you, but your. So going back to our uh, sentence, uh, our test item, number one's answer is one. All right. Kudos to those who answered it correctly. Very good. Very good. So we have a Facebook user and we also have uh, Linarda. Oh, good job. All right. Let's go to item number two. Oh, before that, just allow me to discuss briefly on gerunds. So a gerund is a verb form and usually it ends with an ing. So it is a verb that ends with an ing. But don't but don't uh, confuse it with a verb because we also have words or verb of words that ends with an ing and yet functions still as a verb. For example, I am attending a lecture tonight. So when you say I'm attending, that expresses an action. I am attending. Um, but in this case, the gerund functions as a noun. And when we say it functions as a noun, it can either be a subject of the sentence. It can be a direct object of the sentence, meaning a direct receiver of the action. It can be a subject complement, meaning it describes a subject like my cat's favorite activity is sleeping. So you would say, what's the favorite activity of the cat? It's sleeping. So sleeping here refers back or modifies the word activity. So it's a subject complement. Or it can also be an object of a preposition. So would you like to walk instead of taking the bus? So we use the word of being a preposition and it is followed by a verb form in a, in a, uh, a verb in an ing form. So taking becomes an object of the preposition, hence a noun. Functions is a noun. All right? So let's go to number two. Get ready. Oh, thank you for the feedback. Allow me to go back. Okay. Let me check, huh? Can you already hear me? Allow me to proceed. Please give me a feedback. Should, you, should there be technical difficulties from my end? All right. Number two, the children are very creative. They blank how to improvise their props. Is it no, new, knows, known, or are known? Please key in your answer. Thank you so much for the feedback. All right. So this time, still varied answers. Okay. All right. I believe, uh, however, most of the answers here says it's one. All right. And there are answers for five. So it's between one and five. All right. So let's take a look at them. The children are very creative. They blank know how to improvise their props. 
So what we are given here in this sentence is the word, is the noun or the subject in the sentence being children. And then the second part, they. And when I say children and they, they are plural in form. And so we eliminate number three, which is knows. All right. Knows, number three, is fit for a singular subject. So you would say, the child is very creative. Or you would say, he or she knows how to improvise the, his prop. All right. So number three is eliminated. Let's take a look at number two. The children are. With the use of the are, we know that the sentence is in the present tense. Are. And so, to match it with the word new is not consistent in terms of verb usage. So, number two is also eliminated. So, answers for two and three are incorrect. But let's take a look at number four, known. The word known is a past participle form of the verb know. And we use a past participle form with either a linking verb or a helping verb. So you would say is known, am known, are known, has, have, or had known. But it cannot stand on its own. So numbers two, three, four are eliminated. And hence, we are left with one and five. So very good. There's a lot who answered one and five. Okay. Let's see the difference. Let's take, okay. So, are known, however, number five is also an incorrect answer because you, when you say are known, it's a passive form of no. So, you would say they are known for their creativity. They are known for their being resourceful. So you would say that kind of sentence. But this, this sentence is in the active voice, meaning the subject is the doer of the action and not the receiver. So when you say they are known, it's in the passive form. But you would say they know how to improvise their props. It's in the active form. Hence, number one is correct. Very good. Let me not call out your name. I think you're too many right now. Okay, very good. I hope you take note of uh, the grammar rule. In terms of consistency in the verb usage and subject and verb agreement. All right. Let's go to item three. The two companies will upgrade blank computer systems next week. Is it it's without an apostrophe? It's with an apostrophe, there, there, or there. Medyo confusing po yung spelling of the words, but each of them has corresponding meaning. So which one do you think fits best? All right. The answers are still varied. Let's wait for the others. Okay. Yeah. But many of you answered three. That's very good. Let's take a look. What we are given in this sentence is the subject. Two companies. There are two companies who will upgrade. And we talk about systems, which is also plural. So if we talk about two companies, meaning it's plural, and the use of the word it's or it's with a, a, a contraction, it is, is incorrect here. Hence, we eliminate one and two. So let's, let's differentiate first. It's with and without an apostrophe. 
So when we say it without an apostrophe, it's a possessive pronoun. For example, you would say the cat is eating its food. The dog wiggles its tail. So whose whose tail or food are we talking about? So it's its. While on the other hand, the it with an apostrophe s is actually a contraction of it is or it was or it has. They would say it is important to study before an exam. So instead of saying the word which is longer, you contract it and so you say it's, right? So because we are talking about two companies and the word it refers to only one thing, then one and two are incorrect. Okay, yes, very good. So most of the answers here is three. But before we arrive at the answer, let's differentiate first their items three, four, and five, which are actually spelled differently. Now, when we say their, T-H-E-R-E, -E, the first column, it's an adverb that refers to a place, or it can also be a pronoun, a demonstrative one. So you would say, there is nothing wrong with her, or she lives over there, when you are referring to a place. While in the second column, it is a possessive case pronoun. It shows ownership. So whose house is new? There or theirs. And the, on the third column, it's also a contraction. When you see an apostrophe, more or less, it signals that it's a contraction. The word is contracted. There are supposed to be two words, but to make it shorter, it's being contracted. So instead of saying they are or they were, you say there. All right? They are going to the shopping center. They were nice shoes. All right? So given this, the best answer that we could have arrive at number three is very good. Three. Wow. A round of applause to all of you because you got it all right. Very good. Let's go to number four. Oh. My, what do you call that? I tried to add animations, but I think it doesn't work right here. So at least you see, you see already that number two and number five are eliminated. So you just choose between one, three, and four. And I also underlined Clara. So let me read the item. Clara blank 3,000 words for her essay. So which one? Is it has wrote, has written, had written? For those who have attended my, my, the previous sessions with me, I think I have a, a lengthy discussion on um, perfect tense tenses. I hope you can still recall them. And the answers, yeah, mostly answered three, but there's also a one who answered four and one. Okay, so it's, oh uh, yeah. So you're left with the choices that I have not given X. But allow me to rationalize why I marked 2 and 5X. When we say wrote, let's take a look at the verb uh, form write. So if it's a base form, you would say write. If it's an S form, meaning it fits for a singular subject, you would say writes. If it's a, a past form, you would say wrote. But if it's a participle form, a past participle form, you would say written. And the past participle form of the verb is always paired with either is, are, am, which are linking verbs, or has, have, and had, which are actually um, for perfect tenses. So the sentence that I'm, I'm, I'm presenting to you right now is a perfect tense. It's actually. Yeah, it's a perfect tense. Allow me to reveal what kind of tense, what, what kind of perfect tense later. But um, I have eliminated have wrote because the underlined subject here is Clara. And Clara is singular. It's only one person. And for one person or for a singular subject, we always partner it with has and not have. 
So 2 and 3 are eliminated. We don't know yet the tense of this verb, so it could possibly be a has or a had. But I would also like to eliminate number one. Those who have answered number one, because as I have said, when we are talking about perfect tenses, when you, have, when you pair an action word with a linking verb like is, are, am, you would say is written and not is wrote. Are written, am written. The same thing when you partner it with helping verbs like has, have, or had, you would say has written, have written, or had written, but not wrote. All right? So we eliminate items one, two, and five. And so we are left with items three and four because we say this is a perfect tense verb. So let me proceed to the next slide. So I, as I have said earlier, when we talk about the verb write, it takes the following form. Write for base form, writes for singular form or S form, wrote for past form, written for past participle form, and writing for present participle form. So two is, one is also eliminated, which we, where we are left with, um, is it perfect tense? Is it a present perfect tense? Has written? Or is it a past perfect tense, had written? Let's take a look at our statement. Oh, before that, allow me to differentiate present perfect and past perfect. So when we say present perfect tense, you, may, you use this to express things that you have done in your life. You may not specify the time expression. So the time expression may not be specified here. As long as you are expressing something that you have done or you have not done in your life or you have done or have not done from the past until now. But in this case, in our statement, there is no time expression specified. Whereas when we talk about past perfect tense, you use this to describe an action finished before another past action. And in this case, there needs to be a specified time expression that it happened in the past or that there is another mentioned past action. So going back to the statement, nothing. There is no other action stated and there is no time expression indicated. Yeah, that's right. Uh, from Phil Ed. Nagawa na, nasulat na. That, that's right. Yeah, meaning it, it has been done. But actually, when we talk about present perfect and past perfect, both are done already. The only difference is that there's a, in, in terms of time frame, in terms of time frame, when we say present perfect, from your, the whole of your life, from the time you were born until now, what have you or have you not done? What, whereas when we talk about past perfect, what have you done before another action occurred or before another action happened? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll try to notice. I'll try to uh, shout out your names. Uh, please, uh, just give me a feedback here. But I apologize if I will not be able to mention all of you. All right. So. If we take a look at number four, the best answer here is three. Clara has written 3,000 words for her essay. Has agrees with the subject Clara, which is one, and written showing that it's a perfect tense. All right, very good. I'm now getting anxious. <laughs> that my in the next slides the answers will be revealed because i put some animations and in this case it doesn't work okay so please bear with me ha huh, if i reveal some of the answers to you all right let's go to number five see i told you <laughs> all right but allow me to rationalize so uh let's mark why is it why is it this way why should it be painted 
and the answers are already revealed right to your screen. Okay. I'll try not to add animations next time. I'm learning from this experience. Uh, we had our house blank in yellow before the typhoon came. So what we are given are verbs. We have had, and another one is, <laughs> thank you for laughing with me. This is quite an embarrassing situation, but um, instead of laughing at me, just laugh with me <laughs> okay those are uh, ano gani? uh phrasal verbs which has difference in meaning so when you say laugh at it's it in it means to degrade at another you mock the person you laugh at him it's like bullying or putting down the person it's it, it's some form of mockery or ridicule but but if you say laugh with then you're joining the person all right. <laughs> Sige. Nakisigoy pa si ma'am. <laughs> uh, let's go to number five. So what we are given here is the word had and the phrase before the typhoon came. Remember earlier what I told you about present perfect, uh, past perfect tense? It, it expresses an action before another uh, occurs or, or before another action occurred. Or happened and in this case there are two actions that happen the first one is painting the second one is the coming of the typhoon so if we take a look at the order or the time when the two actions happened the painting happened first before the coming of the typhoon so to express that it is a first action before another one is completed or before another one occurred, we use the past perfect tense. Hence, we say, we had our house painted. We had painted our house before the typhoon came. So usually, in terms of expressing a statement that makes use of a past perfect tense, we use... The, the, uh, the formula is um, past perfect plus before plus simple past. So had painted plus before plus came, which is a past a perfect past and uh, no, simple past tense. Sometimes we also use the word after to connect the two actions. So you would say after. After we had painted our house, the typhoon came. So you can use expressions like before or after to indicate that there are two actions that have happened. And for the first action, you have to make use of the past perfect. And for the next action or the second action, you have to signify using it or, or use the simple past form. All right. I hope I was able to clarify this uh, rule to you. Let's go to number six. Oh, there it is again. Instead of uh, stressing out on, on what I did with the presentation, please just bear with me, all right? So at least you are left with items three and four. Allow me to read the statement to you. Flight Z735 blank yesterday. 350 passengers died in that accident. So in the statement, what we are given is that it happened yesterday. And if we take a look at yesterday and check out the verbs there that happened yesterday or, or are in the simple past tense, it should have an ED. Hence, I cross out 1, 2, and 5, which are in the present tense. So we are left with items three and items four. It's between crushed or crashed. If you take a look at it, it's a very minute thing. It's The difference is just between U and A, but uh, it means significantly. It means differently, or the difference is that significant. So let's take a look at, let's differentiate the meaning of the two. What's the difference between crush and crash? So when you say a crash, you, you mean 
it it could be a collision or an accident it can be a car accident it can be a strong hard hat to protect the head so a crash helmet or you can also use it to say to crash against or to move with uh, a force or to say you you crash a party so uninvited you just get in there or a crash course meaning a refresher so does the statement fit in this word or does this word fit in the statement let's take a look at crush with a u <laughs> tama nga dinurog na nabangga <laughs> yeah tama or so to say to crush something so dinurog <laughs> Dinurog, dinurog, durog. Hopefully, it's not our hearts. <laughs> it's not your heart, okay? So, to crush the opposition. So, usually, it, this means for war or crushed. When you are, when, when your crush busts you or busts you, then you are feeling crushed. You are deeply disappointed. Or to have a crush on someone, all right? All right, they get. So going back, surely you are right. So the correct answer here is crashed. We mean accident. And we have there the, the clue in the statement. Very good. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a crush on somebody, it's better if you receive a yes. But if you receive a no, then surely you are, your heart will be crushed. Number seven. Oh, there it is again. So you are left with choices four and five. At least you still have two choices to choose from, no? Having an animation is actually not a good move for me in this uh, presentation. Again, let's let, take a look at number seven. There is a blank message when you look closely at the painting so what the clue that we are given in this statement by the way when you are given um test items like this you are usually given clues so you have to spot them to help you analyze the sentence and in this case the clues are a blank message so we know that a is an article or a determiner that introduces a noun and a noun is the word message a message so the blank there tells us that it describes what kind of message is it so we eliminate hid and hide the items are choices one and two because they are verbs what we are looking for are actually is actually an adjective and we also eliminate number three because hide there is no such word as hide it. It's a correct, it's, an, it's a wrong spelling. And it's a wrong way of. In the past form. So is it hidden or hiding? Oh, there's one who answered five with a question mark, meaning you are confused. So when we say hidden there's a hidden message if we uh, we if we if we connect uh, if we use the if we choose the best word to fit in the sentence number four is actually the correct answer here it's a hidden message there is a hidden message meaning some nakatago nakatagong mensahe but if we say hiding the word is also a participle. I will introduce to you what a participle is in a while, but it doesn't fit in the message. So you would say a high. Most likely you would say it is, there is. A, the child is hiding. So you would say like that. And it functions as a verb this time. All right. Now, let me talk about a, what a participle is. I introduced to you a participle. Earlier, I introduced to you a gerund. It is also a verbal. A verbal, as I've said, is a verb 
the, uh, is a word that looks like a verb but actually functions not as a verb. Instead, otherwise. So we have different kinds of verbals. There's actually three. The first one I introduced to you earlier, the gerund, which actually functions as a noun. And the second one is an infinitive. An infinitive is a verb that is paired with the word to, like you would say, to go, to sing, to dance, to listen. So that's an infinitive. And the third one is a participle. A participle is, is a word that looks like a verb but does not function as a verb. Instead, it functions as an adjective, something that describes. And by, by appearance, if a gerund always ends with an ing, a participle sometimes ends with an ing, sometimes with a d, sometimes with an ed, or sometimes with an en, like the word hidden, or ing, like hiding. Let's take a look. Let's compare the two. So when we say present participle, it ends with an ing form. It's the present participle form of the verb, smile. So you turn it into smiling or cry, crying. But if it's a past participle, like written earlier, so you would say spoken, broken, written, a written message a spoken word or a spoken message, all right? So here, the best word that fits in our sentence is the past participle form. There is a hidden message. And great job, everyone. Almost all of you got it right. Very good. I wonder what would happen next. Am I going to reveal the answer or not? Lord, please no. <laughs> all right? Let's go to number eight. Oh, good thing. The principal makes sure that harmony prevails blank the departments. Is it of, with, among, amidst, or between? So this time, the statement challenges to you to recall your knowledge on prepositions. And um, for most of the people I have met so far, even myself, the confusing, the most confusing a part of speech, there are actually eight of them, but the most confusing one is actually on preposition. Sometimes there are no definite rules. Sometimes the rule just says that if it sounds awkward, then it doesn't fit in the sentence. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would agree with you when you would say three with a question mark because when we talk about uh, prepositions, sometimes uh, rules are confusing. Sometimes there are no definite rules. But at least right now when we search on the net, there's actually a lot of uh, materials that uh, discusses rules and preposition. Together. So varied is of or among, but most of the answers here says three, among. What we are given here, the clue in the statement that we are given is that we're talking about departments. When we say departments, that, that is plural, so meaning it's many. Let's take a look at the next slide. So if it's many, we can eliminate some of the things here. Uh, let's differentiate of, with, or to. These, these three words are actually prepositions of possessions. For example, when you use the word of, it is usually used for cities, countries, people, and possessive pronouns like mine or yours. So you would say, Taj Mahal is the finest monument of India. Whose monument? of India and not of China. I would say, a friend of mine had a car accident. Whose friend are we talking about? Of mine. So it's a pos showing possession. When you use the word with, it is used with objects or materials or animals, still showing possession. The boy 
with the dragon tattoo. Which boy are we talking about? The one with the dragon tattoo. Or the cat with black spots. Which cat are we talking about? The one with black spots. When we use the word to, it is usually used in expression in the expression belong to. For example, you would say, this race course belongs to the government. To which does the race course belong? So to the government. So if, it, if you encounter these, these are actually prepositions of possessions, meaning showing ownership or possession. So let's go back to the statement. The principal makes sure that harmony prevails of the departments no because this does not express it. this does not express possession so we can eliminate of and with so we are left with among amidst and between let's continue so those who say one and two that's actually incorrect those who answered three uh, no nobody answered four and five and i agree with you because the best answer here is three why let's differentiate the three when we say between you're only talking about two or sometimes you can talk about more when you mean that the one that you are referring to is in between something at the left and something at the right but usually to say between you, you mean two two things the ball rolled between the desk and the ball, in between the two. There is very little difference between a lion and a tiger. So two things only. What about among? It means you are surrounded by something or somebody which is more than two. And it is usually used when we talk about countable things remember count noun versus mass nouns count nouns you can count them one two three four five but mass nouns they are not countable so we walked among the crowds in red square and we say crowds are people you can count how many of them so use among he is no he is known among his friends as a bookworm so among the friends countable they are there are many of them so among them he is the bookworm but when you say amid or you can also use the archaic form amidst it means you are in the middle or surrounded by something which is not countable so you refer to the mass nouns the company collapsed amidst allegations and you cannot count allegations that's an abstract word i was standing amid many noises so noise is also uncountable so if we go back to the statement the best answer indeed is three great job very good everyone let's go to number eight or number nine rather of the two candidates for this government position, Andrew is the blank. His experience. Okay, Andrew is the blank. His experience in the field. Is it most qualified due to what do you think is your answer here? Most qualified because of most qualified as a result of more qualified because of or more qualified as a result of what do you think is the best answer here all right i've got one and three there's also one says saying, saying four ah so varied ah, so the first five persons who answered represent one two three or four and five okay let's take a look at the sentence and look for some clues and at the beginning of the sentence we are given the word of and usually the word of is a preposition that can either be introducing one two or more or more nouns and here we are given the idea that 
we're talking only about two candidates. Of the two candidates for the government position. And if we recall our lesson on adjectives, degrees of comparison, we say positive degree if you're talking about only one person, comparative degree if you're talking about two persons, and superlative degree if you're talking about three or more persons. But in this case, in number nine, you're talking about only two candidates. So we are talking about a comparative degree of adjective. And when we say beautiful, for example, that's the positive degree to say that in a comparative degree, you would say more beautiful. But if you say it or express it in the um, superlative degree, you would say most beautiful. And in this case, that's right, more qualified because of. Yeah, so we are talking only, that's right, Leslie, you're talking only about two candidates. And so we can start eliminating one, two, and three. The use of the word most is fit only for a superlative degree, meaning you are comparing three or more persons. So we are left now with items four and five. It's more qualified. Andrew is the more qualified of the two candidates. Now, the differentiation now is left between because of and as a result of. If we take a look at the two, because of and as a result of, they would mean the same because we're, talk we're talking about the expression due to. Actually, due to, because of, as a result of, almost similar in meaning. But what's the difference between the two? When we say because of and as a result of, the only difference is that the expression as a result of is incomplete. The correct expression actually is as a result of. They both mean the same. So as a result of is used to introduce the cause or origin of an action. The same way when you say because of. So the, what is the correct answer? Yeah. I forgot number seven. Allow me to go back later. We are already in number nine. And I, yeah, I'll allow, allow me to go back later. So number, so number nine, if we, if we go back here, we say the best answer is actually four. Of the two candidates for this government position, ah, yeah, thank you, thank you, Lee. Yeah, number seven's correct answer is hidden, a hidden message. Thank you, Lee. So here in number nine, the best answer here is four. Why do we say so? Of the two candidates for this government position, Andrew is the most, is the more, more qualified because of. Number five could be could have been correct if the expression was completed. So you would say more qualified as a result of. See, sometimes the test items or the choices are actually tricky. They would look correct, but actually sometimes a letter or two are just missed out to make them incorrect as a very good destructor, right? Let's go to number 10. The Garcia family does not live here blank. And I have already given you a clue. I have underlined does not. So what word here best fit this sentence? Facebook user is also asking for an answer to number six. Can somebody help me? If you could check out, we could help the face uh, our Facebook user identify the answer for number six. It's quite difficult for me to go back to the test questions. Here, could it be no more, anymore, which is spaced? Very good. Thank you, Lee. 
So Facebook user, item number six, the correct answer is crashed with a letter A. So is it anymore with a space or anymore as one word, no longer or not anymore? Oh, varied. So what's the answer for number 10? Your answers so far are very, I, okay, yeah. Mm, all right. So most of you answered number three, the one without space. And that's actually correct. Very good. But why do we say so? Have you recall, for those who have attended sessions with me in the past, I talked about double negatives. So when we say double negatives, it's using two negative words in the same sentence. For example, you would say, I haven't got none. So you have vent with a not, and then none means also negative. So we shouldn't we should avoid these kinds of sentences. And so in, to correct it, you would say, I haven't got any. So going back here, because of the word not, we can already eliminate one, which is no more, no longer, and not anymore. Because they represent double negatives. So we are left between two and three. So the question is, is it spaced out or not spaced? Is it anymore or anymore? Let's see the difference between the two. All right. So when we say anymore, where am I? So when we say anymore without a space, you would say it is any longer or nowadays, meaning the Garcia family does not live there any longer or nowadays. But when we say anymore, that means that refers to something additional or further, like questions. Any more questions? So that, that's it. So the best answer here is three. Great job. Very good. Some of you, I understand, uh, are keying and I, I re I'm receiving some of the answers late. And yeah, for those who have entered the answer to the previous question, you are right. The, the answer there is more qualified because of. Let's go to number 11. Oh, see, I've given you an answer already. So. Just allow, just allow me to explain why is this so. Number 11, blank, an important factor in improving mental and physical health and thereby reduces human misery and poverty. If we take a look at this statement, we are given a clue. One is that we're talking about something which is an important factor. That's an adjective to the subject. And that... It reduces human misery and poverty. So what we are looking for here is the subject to the sentence. And it is lacking. And if we take a look at the items here, it could be number one, play, which could also stand as, as the subject. Or it can also be recognition, which is a noun that could stand it as a subject. Let's take a look at each of the item if we try to correct them. So number one, play being recognized. So we could correct this to make it fit in the sentence this way. Play being the subject, comma, being recognized as an important factor improves and reduces 